regarding B tree, whatever we have discussed so far. No, sir. Okay, so let me start with today's presentation. Uh, I'm going to discuss start discussion about graphs. So I have a plan that I will just start with basic terminologies of graph. Uh, then uh, few important problems I will discuss which involve graph data structures. Like uh, first of all, uh, the BFS and DFS, the kind of traversal which are very useful in solving many real life problem which can be modeled to graph. And then I will just uh, discuss about topological sorting, uh, which also has uh, very important applications like uh, like in case of job scheduling in operating systems, uh, as well as uh, digital circuit simulation, logic simulation specifically. And then I will like to discuss uh, two famous algorithms uh, for solving minimum spanning tree like Prims and Kruskal, which are very, very useful algorithms. And then I would also like to touch upon um, shortest path problem, single source shortest path problem I will discuss mainly. Uh, this, this is the plan uh, about graphs. Let's see uh, how it goes. Hello, sir. Yes. Shangam, sir, yes. will we be learning? We will will we be learning like finding Euler path in a graph or something Hamiltonian path? Uh, I don't have that plan right now. But are you interested? Then I can think of. I mean, uh, the initial plan. Uh, I don't have that. But if you want, I can discuss. Euler path and actually Hamiltonian path problem is NP complete problem. So yes, there is no uh, typical uh, deterministic solution available for solving Hamiltonian path in general graphs. But Euler path problem is very, very easy to solve. I mean, there are famous algorithms. If you want, I can discuss, I can discuss at least Euler path I can discuss because uh, during my PhD dissertation, I had used Euler path and Euler tool algorithms a lot. So I know them how to solve. And if you are interested, you after this discussion is over, uh, the planned discussion, then we can have no problem. Just let me know whether you are interested. Let's uh, finish the parts which I have planned and then you inform me if you are interested I can discuss no problem okay okay sir, okay, sir thank you okay. so let okay. so let me present Is it visible? Slides visible? Yes, sir. OK. So let me start. So I'll start with uh, basic terminology. Many of you may have already uh, experienced some problems which involves graphs, and you may have solved some of them also. You have some idea. But just for sake of uh, completeness, let me very quickly review the basic terminologies which are very important so you have uh, learned tree a lot i mean so when we come to graphs you will find that trees are basically a subclass of graphs okay so or alternatively you can consider graphs as an extension of tree data structure from data structure point of view but graphs uh, are not only used in uh, some uh, uh, 
data as some data structures graph uh, application of graphs is enormous in uh, theoretical computer science and actually in mathematics okay so uh, set theoretic definition of graphs uh, all of you are aware that basically it's it's a structure that collection of two sets v and e v sets v contains uh, basically set of vertices or nodes and e is called set of edges and each edge basically represents a pair of vertices actually it represents a relation between the vertices okay so in usual problem uh, which we encounter nodes represents some entities okay when we model a real life problem using graph uh, like then each node may represent some people when we are talking about relationships among people like uh, any social media uh, structure like facebook or um twitter or anywhere if you want to represent your friendship network uh, then each and every people will be the node and the friendship relation may represent the edges uh, similarly in case of uh, a electrical network nodes may be representing uh, some junction and edges may represent uh, the wires like that okay so basically in any case the edges will represent uh, some relation between the connected nodes or entities okay so this is a typical pictorial representation of a graph and as you know this relationship be between two vertices that uh, realizes an edge may be unidirectional or bidirectional that means their relation may be asymmetric which might have a direction and some relations are symmetric uh, which are bidirectional so the edges sometimes may be directed sometimes may be undirected and based on that we'll see the graphs may be directed graph or undirected like a friendship relationship usually is a symmetric relationship if a is friend of b that means b is also friend of a so this is a bidirectional relation so if we connect a and b by an edge that edge will have arrows in both the directions or without arrow it's an undirected edge this since the relationship is symmetric now sometimes some relations may be asymmetric like if we are trying to connect two entities two people uh, like a edge is representing from a to b there will be an edge if a is elder than b then this relation is asymmetric because if a is elder than b b cannot be elder than a so the direction will be unique direction okay so depending on the relation type edges will be directed or undirected and accordingly a graph which contain directed edges will call that graph as direction directed graph and a graph which consists of undirected edges that means based on symmetric relationships will be uh, i mean undirected graph and uh, sometimes in some rare scenario a graph may be mixed like having um, directed and undirected edges both okay so this is a typical example so these nodes are uh, typically the nodes are represented by some name uh, na na some number or some a b c d letter or even some alpha numeric character no problem okay and the edges will be the just uh, pair of vertices the same number same numbers will be drawn from the same set that is from the vertex set okay so so this is a kind of real life example like we have we want to uh, represent this scenario where there are six students namely oman rajni umesh anurag arna vikram with total attendance this okay now we are saying that we will be having an age xy that is a a is directed from x to y if x has attended less classes than y okay so this will be a typical directed graph kind of thing 
Okay, there may be different other graphs that you have already seen. Uh, so I don't need to spare a lot of time. So this is also I have whatever I have already discussed the directed graph and non-directed graph. Here is the definition, formal definition, and here are the corresponding pictorial representation. Okay. And directed graph sometimes uh, called digraph in sort. Okay. Now uh, degree, uh, all of you know uh, from your mathematics class, I think uh, that in a, in case of a directed graph, each node uh, will have some edges that are coming towards it, and some edges may emerge from that node going out outwards direction so based on that a node can have in degree and out degree in degree is the number of edges that are coming into the towards s uh, the node x and out degree will represent the number of edges that are coming out of x and for an uh, undirected graph obviously there will be no in, in degree out degree segregation uh, it will be only degree and that will represent the number of edges that are incident on that particular node okay so and path a path you are already familiar in in case of tree you have already seen so path basically and sequence of nodes basically so in between nodes there must be an edges so it starts with a node ends at a node and so two consecutive nodes will be there if there exists a valid edge in the graph okay so a path in a graph is a sequence of nodes x1 x2 up to xk where x1 x2 is an edge x2 x3 is an edge like that okay so it starts from starts with a node ends with a node and obviously if the starting node and ending node are same, then it will be a cycle. Okay. Just like here, in the left figure, we have 4, 0, 3, 4. This is a cycle. Okay. Similarly, in the right side figure, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, or 1, 2, 3, 0, 1. Everyone represents the same cycle. Okay, so accordingly, uh, if a graph contains at least one cycle, the graph is called cyclic graph. And if a graph doesn't contain any cycle, then that graph is called acyclic graph. Now, connected and disconnected graph. So, what is the definition? A connected graph is a graph where from any vertex, any vertex, you can reach all other vertex. There are valid paths to reach from one vertex to all other vertex. Okay. So the right side, you see, you consider any node, you can reach any other node. You consider the rightmost node, this one. Now there are edges through which you can reach any other node. You consider all nodes, all other nodes will be reachable from that node. But here you see this particular subset subgraph is connected. This subgraph is connected, but if you consider the entire graph, uh, this definition of connectedness doesn't hold. Like you cannot reach any of these four vertices from any of these two vertices or vice versa. So this total graph is called disconnected graph, where a disconnected graph will comprise of a number of connected components. So this, this, this is a connected component. This is a connected component. So these are basically connected subgraphs. But the entire graph is disconnected. Okay. So if you consider the entire Facebook network, you will find it will comprise of many disconnected components of friendship network okay in reality 
but we'll see that we'll we'll consider this these individual components are also graph and obviously they are connected graph and most of the algorithms we will find they will work on connected components and if you want to solve uh, any problem on the entire graph so you have to solve the problem for each and every connected component separately okay now there is a special graph which is called complete graph which is obviously a connected graph uh, but it is so connected that all nodes are reachable from each other with a direct link like in a connected graph uh, to reach from one node to another node you can have multiple hops like suppose there is a node a and there is a node m now a and m are reachable but not directly a to b then b to c then c to m so you need to have three hops to reach m so this is if this type of things is there it is connected but when we can claim that we can reach any vertex from any other vertex directly like there is a direct link just one hop we can reach then this special connected graph will be called complete graph this is a very dense graph like and their their structure will be unique for any particular number of nodes like if you have a complete graph of two nodes it will look like this like a matchstick similarly if you want to have a complete graph of three nodes it will like a triangle and if we have want to have a complete graph of four nodes it will look like this so complete graph for a particular number of nodes will have a unique structure this is very very special graph and a complete graph with n nodes will have n into n minus 1 by 2 edges remember here we are saying complete graph and we are not mentioning anything about directed or undirected so if nothing is mentioned we will assume we are talking about undirected graph or symmetric relationships okay now the relationship between tree and ray graphs so basically from graphs point of view a tree is nothing but is a connected acyclic undirected graph do you agree yes sir so we have we have already got different definition of tree but if we if you consider uh, the a uh, tree as a subgraph of uh, i mean subclass of graph then we can have this type of definition it must be connected tree tree cannot be disconnected okay it will be connected any node should be reachable from any other node it should be acyclic there should not be any cycle then it cannot be a tree and it should be undirected okay and hello sir when we have yes sir i yes, have confusion yes. in previous this? slide yes tell me sir go to the previous slide here complete graph yes sir mm. yes sir mm. sir in the definition you have written that an undirected graph is said to be complete if any vertex is adjacent sir is there any or every vertex yes 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 you are correct it should be every vertex is adjacent to all others yes you are right yes it should be every yes yes thank you so basically yes, every vertex should be adjacent to all others with a direct link yes adjacent means there is a direct link okay so th this should not be any it should be every yes thank you okay so what will be the memory representation see this the all of uh, us are very comfortable in pictorial representation but in computer memory you cannot cannot store 
uh, graphs as pic picture, isn't it? So, what will be the memory representation? Obviously, there are two very very popular memory representation. I might be no, uh, you might be knowing that one is adjacency matrix, another is adjacency list. Adjacency matrix is basically a two D array to store graph information. Okay, so you just read it out. So there will be a two D matrix kind of thing. Okay. So cell I J will be one or zero depending on whether there exist an edge between I and J. Okay. For directed graph, we will follow that I J and J I cells are different. Like if there is an edge going from I to J, then we will put a one in I J cell. And if there is an edge from J to I, then only we will put a one in J I cell. But for undirected graph, if there is an edge from I to J, that means both I J cell and J I cell will have a one. Okay. So for directed graph, this graph. You see the corresponding adjacency matrix representation will look like this. So if there is there there are n vertex, n number of vertices in a graph, the adjacency matrix representation will be an n cross n array. Okay. Very very simple representation, but as you can easily understand that this will be very inefficient in terms of memory storage because n square uh, will be the memory requirement order of n square for very large n it will be very big uh, big array but other advantage is that the accessing i mean the if if you if your problem involves uh, to check whether there exists an edge between i and j it will be very easy to check that because the random access of the array will allow you to directly go to the ij location of the array and check whether there is an 1 and 0 and you can easily check that okay but in practice uh, the memory requirement will be very inefficient and at the same time, the all uh, real life problems, when we actually model real life problem through graphs, we'll find that the graph may be very large, but it will be very sparse in nature. That means when we have n number of nodes, the maximum possible edges will be order of n square. Now in real graphs, we will rarely find that the number of edges will be very close to n square. It will be very close to n. Okay, so that means number of edges will be very very less than the maximum possible number of edges. So it, the actually real life graphs mostly are very sparse graph, not dense graph. Dense graph means close to very complete, almost complete graph. If you can, will be very beneficial because all of the cells. But in case of sparse graph, even if you have a large matrix, most of the entries will be zero. And then what? So that will be very underutilization of the memory. And if you still uh, require to store the graph in adjacency matrix representation then you know how to how to uh, optimize that in case of sparse graph you have already studied that can you tell me suppose you have a very very sparse graph 
and you want to represent that using adjacency matrix representation and you find that most of the entries are zero then can you say any way of optimization using linked list hmm so linked list obviously the adjacency list is other option but still as i have said see adjacency list representation so we'll see just matrix. after this uh, but as you can as you refer yeah huh hello sir use of a sparse matrix sir he is saying sparse matrices sir he is saying sparse matrices exactly exactly see what i am telling if you are bound to keep this adjacency matrix representation as i have said you have to very very frequently check whether there exists an edge between i and j then adjacency list may not be very good thing because that that search will take very much time in adjacency list representation although it will give you um, efficient utilization of memory but still that will be not that much good for computation but if you want to get some advantage of this adjacency matrix representation um, for a very sparse graph you can optimize it by using this concept of sparse matrix okay i, I mean as you deal with the sparse matrix you can do that and obviously this 1 and 0 as i have said we are we are assuming that uh, this is this is called simple graph where uh, there is only one undirected edge from Uh, between two nodes okay but in some rare cases uh, two nodes can have multiple edges okay parallel edges or uh, the graphs may be weighted like the edges may have different weights in some real problem we will see in that case instead of one we can put that weight also like this for an weighted graph adjacency matrix representation is like this that zero means there is no edge and it can be 1 2 3 4 5 depending on the weights of the edges be only 1 and 0 and it is simple there is no parallel edge then it will be 1 and 0 but see this parallel edge kind of thing is very uncommon okay just for sake of completeness i have included that but this weighted graph is very common ha huh? sir in the previous uh, in this slide uh, negative sign implies the uh, opposite direction no sir no 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 see wait as i have said the weights may be negative also this weights in general may be negative also um, what does it mean sir negative weight means so in real life uh, sir what is it in real life you don't have that um, weight negative but in some some abstract problem you may find that edge weights may be negative i'll i'll give some example later okay but theoretically you you can have both types of weight sir what is the meaning of negative weight meaning means it depends on the relationship like suppose suppose you are you are actually uh, modeling a problem like a road networks okay a traffic road networks you are modeling okay now each of these edges may represent the cost of uh, uh, travel okay like now it may so happen that in some path you may get some reward in that case actually your cost will be negative your actually your your you are gaining something suppose in abstract way i am telling okay so in that case the weight may be negative like that it 
it just don't get confused you you can for the time me you can assume that age weights are positive that doesn't make any difference okay anything i i am saying that whatever may be the value positive negative i don't have any objection i will just put that thing but if you if you want exact uh, kind of problem uh, for which negative weights can appear uh, i may not be able to give that example right now i will tell you some there are some examples exact example where the negative weights can appear okay but the philosophy is like this the it depends on that what type of problem you are modeling and what type of property you are using to represent the weight now it may so happen that property may like if it is cost then it may not be always that you are uh, giving uh, i mean it may you may gain some way so the how you represent the distinguish between cost incurred and gain achieved so there will be positive negative thing similarly if you gain like this sir can the weight be zero yes that is also possible then actually how? weight zero means uh, here as i said there is no age oh oh but in real life also you can have in a weighted graph you can have an age with zero weight also so it so, actually depends on the exact relationship what you are modeling so okay. uh, so an but, edge with zero weight is just like not having an edge see when 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 you are thinking of only positive edges positive edge weight, weights only cost symmetric relationships huh then it it may be like this but in some problem there may be an edge with a weight zero also okay but typically as you will see i mean don't get confused right now uh, for the timing we assume that edge weights will be uh, only positive okay and zero weights means there is no edge but in some abstract problem you might have negative weights of edge and an physical edge exist with zero edge weight is also possible for the time you just assume that okay but in most of the cases problems we will we'll discuss the problem domain we will be uh, considering there we will only consider non zero positive weights okay those those the, those outliers i'll discuss later I, i and i'll try to find out the exact example okay um, and i will i will let you know in probably in the next class or some other class okay for the time being don't get confused you assume that zero means there is no edge and that means all weights if it is a weighted graph it will be only non zero positive weights okay non zero and non negative weights basically so as i have already discussed uh, the pros and cons of adjacency matrix representation will be something like this okay so this is this is this is very important if we can store in adjacency matrix it is not only simple to implement but it is easy and fast to check whether a pair ij in an edge so if my solution solution i have frequent use of this type of checking then i will prefer to uh, keep my graph in memory as adjacency matrix okay so adjacency list in contrary will be memory efficient okay so it will be a array of linked list okay now the size of this array will be exactly equal to the number of nodes in the graph so for each node there will be a linked list and the linked list will contain all the adjacent nodes to that particular node in any order okay so 0 0th node is see it is adjacent to 1 and 3 only so this is the adjacency list of 0 okay 3 uh, could be here one could be here no problem next the adjacency list of 
node one. Since it is only adjacent to two, that means only node having two. Next, the adjacency list of two, then adjacency list of three in this way. So it is a collection of adjacency list of all n nodes. So it's a kind of array of linked list. Okay, this is very memory efficient because it it, it actually depends on it's the order of number of edges because basically each edge comes exactly for each edge there will be an entry 0 1 0 3 okay similarly 3 0 so for undirected graph the number of entries will be twice the edge so it is just proportional to edges. So if my number of edges are large, the size of this adjacency list will be large. If the number of edges are less, size of this list will be less. Okay. So this is the efficient use of memory. But the difficulty is that if we have that same type of question that we need to detect whether there exists an edge between I and J, what I have to do? I have to perform a linear search on the adjacency list of that particular node i and it may so happen i need to explore the entire list to find out whether it exists or not because they can appear in any order j can appear in any order or j cannot be there if it is not adjacent to j okay and in the worst case a list adjacency list for a node may grow up to I mean, which is proportional to M, the size of the adjacency list. If the degree of that node, out degree of that node is very high, the length of the link list will also be high. Okay. So this is, so computationally, it will be slow if we have to detect this type of thing very frequently in our solution. But obviously, from memory usage point of view, it will be good at any case okay okay up to this yes sir okay now we have to come to traversal because as you have already witnessed graphs are also non-linear data structure like tree uh, actually tree is a subclass of graph so obviously graphs will also be non-linear data structure what does that mean that there is no uh, unique predecessor successor relationships for any element or node okay just like array link list any node you know it has an unique predecessor and unique successor that's why they are called linear data structure whereas when we have this type of tree, graph, this type of data structure, where a node do not have any unique predecessor successor relationship. So we need to fix some order in order to define the predecessor and successor relationship. And accordingly, we can traverse all the nodes. Just in case of tree, you remember we have, uh, we have done apart from pre-order, post-order, in-order traversals. In general graph, there are two very famous traversal techniques, which is called breadth first search and depth first search, BFS and DFS in sort. They are very, very popular and very useful. In fact, depth first search and breadth first search are used to solve uh, many, many real life problems. And in case of uh, many problems which may not appear, directly related with graph, then also the philosophy of DFS, BFS gets applied. Okay. So it is very, very important to understand these two traversals. So they're very easy to understand, but a little bit difficult to implement on real life. Okay. So in both DFS and BFS, the nodes on the undirected graphs are visited in a systematic manner so that every node is visited exactly once. And both BFS and DFS give rise to a tree. So if you traverse a graph 
and if you just record your traversal uh, and automatically you can build a tree which is a subgraph of that original graph because see tree is a connected acyclic graph so if you start with that connected graph and you perform bfs and dfs you will lead to tree or sometimes a forest like the resulting tree in dfs may not be connected you can have several disconnected components as several disconnected trees uh, which is called forest okay let us see with i will i will just illustrate using example so this is the main strategy of breadth first search so for any graph unless it is explicitly specified that from where to start you can arbitrarily choose an vertex any vertex as your start vertex which will be the root of that bfs tree so select an unvisited node x visit it have it be the root in the bfs tree being formed and its level you can level it as a current level okay so because the tree will be grown level wise root will be at the zeroth level then there will be some nodes which will be traversed one by one in level 1 then there will be some nodes which will be traversed next at level 2 like this okay so once the first node you have traversed now from that node you have to explore all the nodes that are directly reachable from that node and when in the next time you will come that you will have multiple nodes in a current level then you have to explore the adjacent nodes of all the nodes in the current level in the order in which you had explored them in the original exploration you start with x now x is visited x is the root then suppose in the graph x is adjacent to y z and p now you have visited y first then z then p this order is up to you okay and this y z p all of them appear in the level 1 x was in level 0 now this y z and p are at level 1 now next iteration will start from x and you have to visit all unvisited adjacent nodes of x first they will come into level 2 then you have to explore all unvisited adjacent node of z those will also come at level 2 and then you have to explore all unvisited adjacent nodes of p they will also come at level 2 so when you are visiting the unexplored or unvisited adjacent nodes of a node in a particular level when there are multiple nodes in the current level for which your adjacent nodes to be visited you need to follow the same order in which you had visited them that is x y and then p uh, y z and then p similarly all the nodes which appear in level 2 now you have to explore all unvisited adjacent nodes of those nodes and then also the order of exploration will be same as in the previous step that is my point so first time you are free to choose the order but the next time the order will depend on the previous choice of your order let me illustrate you will understand so suppose this is the undirected graph okay this is very large graph all nodes are numbered with 0 1 2 3 uh, up to 11 i think okay so without loss of generality let us start from zero 
so zero is our root okay now see this is at level zero of the bfs tree thus constructed since it is root i have since i i was not mentioned to start from any designated node i have started with my node of choice now in bfs what i have to do i have to explore all adjacent nodes from of zero that is who are the adjacent node two four and one they are the adjacent node and i have to check whether they are already visited or not because once i have visited i will mark that node to be as visited so after the first step zero is only visited so now all the adjacent nodes 2 4 and 1 are unvisited so i will explore them and see the order of exploration i have visited one first then two then four okay that's why one comes at the left most position two in the middle and four at the right most position you could have followed a different order no problem you could have written 2 4 1 1 or 1 4 2 no problem but once i have followed this particular order in the next step when i will i will visit all unvisited neighbors of 1 2 and 4 to comprise level 2 of this tree i have to follow the same order that's the important thing i am trying to mention so i will start with All unvisited neighbor of one now. So one, I am coming. See one. Is, who are the neighbor of one? Zero and four. But fortunately, both of them are already visited. So I don't need to visit further. So exploration of one is done. Then I will come to two. Who are the neighbors of two? Zero already visited. Four. already visited 5 unvisited 10 unvisited and 9 so 5 9 10 here also i have to fix a order so i have fixed the order like this 9 10 and 5 okay the first time i am free to choose any order you could have chosen 5 10 9 or 5 9 10 no problem but since i had fixed 1 to 4 in the level 3 i am also exploring the neighbors of 1 first then neighbors of 2 then neighbors of 3 that's the point i was trying to mention okay now that this is complete then i have to check unvisited neighbors of 4 now i am going to 4 who are the neighbors of 4 1 which is already visited 0 which is already visited 2 which is already visited so no node to explore path so up to level 2 is complete now here i have to follow the same order so i have to follow the un, uh, visit the unvisited neighbors of 9 now who are the unvisited neighbor of 9 uh, only 11 is there because ne other neighbor 2 is already visited so i will write 11 then who are the unvisited neighbors of 10 none because 2 and 11 both are already both are already visited so no not to visit then 5 neighbor 2 is already visited but neighbor 7 neighbor 8 and neighbor 6 are not visited so i will Is it like this? Six, seven, eight, or six, eight, seven? I have done. Okay. Now finally, for level four, I have to check eleven. Both the neighbors are already visited. Six for six, only one neighbor five, which is already visited. Eight. Never seven and five, both of them are visited already, and seven, both five and eight, are already visited. So no further exploration. So I have already completed the traversal. Okay.
so this is the bfs tree i have constructed and what is the order in which i have visited 0 then 1 then 2 then 4 then 9 then 10 then 5 then 11 then 6 then 8 then 7 this is the order of traversal of all the nodes understood and this is the bfs tree thus far is it okay yes sir <coughs> yes sir so it's very simple it's going breadth wise as the name suggests breadth first search okay but this order is important whatever order you are following in a particular level while exploring the nodes uh, i mean adjacent nodes of the nodes which appear in the previous level you have to follow the same order while exploring in the next level that is important but for any level while exploring the new adjacent nodes you can follow any order but in the next level you have to follow that order that's the important thing you need to remember that's all okay now i, I have not uh, i mean this undirected graph breadth first search i have not shown because uh, it is not very common as in case of directed graph uh, you will find it is very difficult to grow open, I mean to explore all the nodes uh, in BFS because you may not find uh, I mean that, that will be a disconnected uh, forest kind of thing you have to start from again and again but in case of depth first search I will explore both directed and undirected graph okay as the name suggests uh, depth first search what we will do we will start from a node if it is specified or we can choose any one arbitrarily and then now what we will do we will just go to the adjacent any adjacent node of that node then any adjacent unvisited node of that node that then again down to the adjacent node of that node in this way we will continue to move deep and deep in the graph unless and until we find that there is no way further to go. That means for undirected graph, what will happen? We will see that next node is a node which is already visited. That means just by visiting that node, we will create a cycle. So we will not do that. We will stop there. Or for a directed graph, it may so happen that we may reach at a node from where there is no node to go out. Like there is no outgoing edge from that node. So we will stop there. Or if an outgoing edge leads to a node already visited, that means there is a chance of creating a cycle, we will stop there. Okay. Now, it may, we will not stop there. We will not permanently stop there. We will just stop exploring that particular step when we reach to a node from where there is nowhere to go okay then what we'll do in order to explore other nodes we have to backtrack we have to backtrack to the just previous node of from that node where we had got stuck we'll just go to the parent of that node and check whether there is a way to go and explore some unvisited node again. If it is, we will continue the same process. We will go and visit that node and then from that node we will try to visit another unvisited adjacent node of that node and so on. And we will go on unless and until we again get stuck with these two conditions which I have mentioned earlier. If we get stuck, again we come back or backtrack and we will follow the same mechanism. Now, 
in some cases it may so happen that after exploring a subset of nodes just following forward and backtracking back we have reached to the starting node that means root node from where we had start and still there are few nodes which are left to visit then what will happen we have to again start from another node any arbitrary node from that set of unvisited node and do the following in that case what will happen you you have already got one dfs tree and then next you have to create another dfs tree so it will the resultant dfs will be a forest understood my point you are going deep 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 and stuck some point you are backtracking again going deep 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 and stuck some point in this way you are backtracking and going down and back down and back in this way if you reach at the starting node and still find some nodes are yet to visit yet to be visited then you have to start the process again on that remaining portion and then you will have another separate tree you cannot connect this tree with that tree so it may so happen you you have started with a connected graph but dfs leads to two or more disconnected dfs tree or a dfs forest that is possible we will see okay so for undirected graph let's start with the same undirected graph then we will see the dfs of it directed graph also here again without loss of generality let us start with zero so zero is a root now i can choose any one of the adjacent node one four or two let's say one i am coming here so this one is also visited then from one i have to go to any unvisited neighbor so only four is unvisited so i'll come four from 4 only unvisited node is 2 i will come to 2 then from 2 i have two of or three options 9 10 and 5 because 0 and 4 is already visited so i can choose any uh, 9 11 10 or 5 four options and not 4 uh, 9 10 and 5 so let me choose 5 okay this is arbitrary you can choose any one of this unvisited so from 5 i have three options 7 8 or 6 let me choose 6 now see from 6 i don't have any where to go okay so i have got stuck so what i'll do now i'll just backtrack to the parent of 6 since i have got stuck at 6 i'll just got backtrack to parent of 6 that is 5 okay and then i will check whether there is at least one adjacent node which is not visited yet obviously both 7 and 8 are unvisited so i will choose any one let's say 7 i have chosen so 7 the tree will form like this okay now from 7 i have only one option 8 and from 8 i don't have any option because all the adjacent nodes both 7 and 5 is already visited so what i have to do i have to again backtrack to 7 i am backtracking to 7 but unfortunately 7 do not have any unvisited adjacent node to be visited so i have to backtrack again to parent of 7 that is 5 now unfortunately 5 also do not have any unvisited adjacent node because all 2 7 8 6 all of them are visited so i have to again backtrack to 2 that means parent of 5 okay now 2 only 5 4 and 0 these three nodes have already been visited from 2 but this 10 and 9 are still 
unvisited so i can choose any one now now from here again i am i will come down go deeper 9 and then from 9 to 11 and when coming at 11 i find that there is no where to go okay because both uh no 10 is there na 9 11 so yes 10 will be there 10 10 will be there so 10 10 will be there now from that train no where to go i will backtrack to 11 then 9 then 2 okay now from 2 what i find that all the nodes have been explored two also i'll go to four i'll go to one i'll go to zero and i have reached zero and fortunately here what i found after reaching at zero by several backtrack i find that all the nodes have already been visited so i don't need to start a fresh dfs here it is already done a single dfs has exhausted all the nodes so i'll complete now now you may be wondering what are these red dotted edges i have shown so these are the edges which were not made part of the tree these are the edges which were part of the graph but not part of the tree right now but if i if i draw those edges the bfs tree will dfs tree will look like this and these are called back edge okay these solid edges which i have drawn while constructing the dfs tree are called tree edges okay so these edges that are included in the dfs tree they are called tree edges and the edges which are not included the edges which are the edges of the graph original graph but not part of the dfs tree are called back edges and see this dfs tree is not unique for a graph you might have a different dfs tree and accordingly you might have set of tree edge and set of back edge differently but number of back edges and number of tree edges will always remain constant isn't it are you getting my point since the dfs tree is not unique you might having might be having a different dfs tree because this this is not unique that from zero you need not come to one you may come to two fast or you may come to four fast or you may not start with zero you may, could have started with nine no problem so there can be several dfs tree corresponding to a graph but and accordingly the set of tree edges and set of back edges may be different like in in this dfs tree 0 1 has appeared as this 0 to 1 this edge has appeared as tree edge but in your case this 0 to 1 may be a, may appear as back edge okay but what i am telling the sets may be different but number of back edges and number of tree edges will always remain constant for a particular graph do you agree <clears throat> yes sir why why very easy why anyone why the number of back edges and tree edges will always remain constant for a particular graph whatever way you construct the dfs tree because sir tree edges are fixed because a tree tree has number of nodes minus 1 edges 
exactly so this is the number so, of exactly paper. very good very good since there are 11 uh, 12 nodes in this particular graph so there will be 11 edges exactly 11 edges in the tree the edges may be different the set of edges 11 edges may be uh, may be uh, extracted differently to construct different dfs trees but number will always remain same because a tree is the direct undirected acyclic graph and a tree with n nodes uh, n nodes will always have n minus 1 exactly n minus 1 number of edges okay so number of tree edges will be fixed and since the total number of edges is fixed so number of back edges which is total number of edges minus total number of tree edges that will also be fixed so numbers will remain fixed but sets may be different okay so see from here you can you can another i mean this what you may wonder what is the use of this back edges because we are not making them a part of this <coughs> dfs tree okay you just think why why these tree edges are and uh, back edges are important so dfs on a disconnected graph leads to a forest instead of dfs tree also we'll see dfs on an i mean for for a uh, basically for a directed graph uh, if it is i mean this connected disconnected thing uh, is applied differently strongly connected and disconnected graph okay so let's see this dfs on this diagram how it actually done okay so this is a typical diagram again without loss of generality let us start from a so see a has two adjacent nodes b and d i can choose any one arbitrarily let's say i have chosen b which is unvisited so i visit that and a and b this edge is now included as tree edge now from b i have only one option that is e because that is the only adjacent node from b. so i will come to e now from e i have two options either to d or g let me move to d now from d c i have one option that is going to b but b is already visited so i will not go that so obviously this d to b this edge will be will be not part of this dfs tree so that may be a back edge or something else i'll look at that later okay so but when i backtrack to e i find that this g adjacent node is still unvisited so i will visit that g now from g there is nowhere i should go because from g to d this d is already visited so see this g to d edge will also not be part of the dfs tree so this will be termed as something else anyway i have to go to e again backtrack to e again and there i will find that no adjacent node are yet to be visited all of them are visited so i have to go to b go back to backtrack to b but in case of b there are no unvisited nodes so i will not do anything i will just backtrack to a and there also i find that both b and d are already visited so i don't need to visit anything but this edge a to d will also be marked as something different which is not included in this dfs tree okay but now i have entered a situation where i have come to that very starting point after several backtrack but i know that 
I have not explored the entire graph. There are a few nodes which are yet to be explored. So I will not stop here. I have to start from another DFS by choosing any node in the remaining portion arbitrarily. And that will lead to a, a separate DFS tree. That means the result of this uh, DFS on this graph will be a forest. Okay. So obviously who are left? The C and F. This portion is left. So let me start with C. And from C, I can only move to E or F. E already visited. So I cannot move. So I will just only one option, F. And see this C to E, this edge is also not included into the DFS tree. Not in here, not here. Okay. Now from F to C, I backtrack and find that no had to go and at the same time I have explored all the nodes in the graph. So I'll stop here. So this is my resultant DFS tree from this graph. Now it contains only one, two, three, four and five edges. Now here the edges which were not part of this DFS trees how they will be termed. I mean, in case of undirected graph, we have seen all the edges were termed as back edge. But here for a directed graph, all the edges which are not part of the DFS tree, they are also classified into three different terminologies like forward edge, backward edge and cross edge. Like tree edge, the, this notion is same. Tree edge means all the edges of the graph which are part of the DFS tree. But the set of edges which are not part of the DFS tree are classified into three different types. Forward edge, backward edge and cross edge. Forward edge is the edges that comes from a node to a descendant node in a DFS tree. Like see A to D this edge this is not a part of the dfs tree this this thing but since d appears after a in the dfs tree this a to d edge is termed as forward edge so in case of c undirected graph there was no distinction between a to d or d to a since the direction was not there that's why there was an edge between A to D only. So there was no way we can classify it forward or backward. So all the edges were termed as backward edge or back edge. But here, since there is a direction, so if the direction is such that it comes from a node which appears before the, the right side of the, I mean, right side of that uh, edge, the node at the right side of the edge, then it will be forward edge. But consider this D to B, this edge. Here it appears that as if it is going backward, like D appears after B. That's why this is called backward edge and this is called forward edge. Okay. And this is another interesting edge which was not possible in case of undirected graph because if the undirected graph is connected the DFS tree that there will be a single DFS tree but here since this graph is not connected exactly it, it is obviously it is uh, what I can say uh, you cannot see reach I mean you cannot reach from any node to anywhere like this this part is see this part is not reachable from this part that's why you have got two different uh, DFS tree okay so any age which is not part of the DFS tree and which joins this part to this part is termed as cross edges like this CE see CE and 
also uh, that that connects two nodes that are not ancestrally related like this g and d see you cannot say g whether g d comes before g okay because they are at the same level okay so this ancestor predecessor relationship you cannot define between g and d that's why this a g and d the edge between g and d also called as cross edges okay so these are the classification now you might not be very um, i mean you might be wondering why these classifications are done actually uh, these classifications are used in 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 solving some problems that's why these classifications are made just for performing dfs bfs these classifications are not that much important but when you try to solve some problem these classifications are useful for typical problem you you can see some problems are there when you will try to solve that problem using dfs or bfs this type of edge classification uh, will be beneficial for a simple example like the cycle finding in a graph using dfs okay if you are asked to find whether there exist a cycle in the graph either directed or undirected can you solve this problem using dfs only sir if we find a visited node again then it should be a cycle exactly so basically if you find a single back edge <coughs> in case of undirected graph if there exists at least one back edge in the dfs tree that means the original graph has a cycle isn't it the back edge actually which were not part of the tree actually represents the cycle that is true in case of undirected graph also if you find any uh, back edge backward edge that means it is holding a cycle you see this a b e d b a b e d b so this actually b e d b this one this cycle this is representing a cycle in case of undirected graph this 0 1 4 0 1 4 Two nine eleven ten two, two nine eleven ten two, then five seven eight five, five seven eight five. Okay, there are some other I think two zero four two, two zero yes, two. Uh, that I have missed somewhere. Two zero four two two. Zero or two. I think this is also there will be some edge. Okay. So that's all uh, for today. Uh, if you want to discuss something. So next day I will discuss what uh, the topological sort path. Uh, so DFS BFS, how many of you have already implemented or solved any problem using DFS BFS? Anybody? Hello. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, Vishal. Yes. How many yes, of you have already um, solved some problem using DFS or BFS? Yes, sir, there are there are also this. Huh, Vishal? You have yes, done. Sir. 
Yes. What what problem? What was the problem? Like sir, finding some cycle for printing the DFS DFS traversal. Simple problems. Acha. Okay. Uh, you know what what language you have implemented that C or C plus plus or C plus plus. C plus plus. Okay. So those who have not yet implemented, they can try because this will be very useful. I mean, this DFS BFS, you will find enough uh, problems which you will be needing DFS or BFS to solve. Okay. So these are very important. But again, we see in, in topological sorting, which is having a very very interesting application in several domains of computer science. which can also be solved using dfs i'll show okay okay then uh, so next class will be held at monday na abhishek what i have decided abhishek is not there Yes, sir. As per the schedule, it's on Monday. The next class. Monday from what time? Uh, it is morning, na? From ten thirty or what? Yes, sir. Ten thirty. Ten thirty to eleven thirty. Okay, okay, okay. Sankita or Abhishek, you just remind me on. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Sunday night at any time. Uh, just give me a call so that I remember. monday i have class i have to come okay. to the department okay okay then thank you